Did you have enough? Are you tired of putting effort into collaborations with people who never do anything in return? Do you want to quit? Lay down your hammer and look for greener pastures elsewhere? Well, here's an ancient problem. Will you actually find a better, more collaborative place? Or will you just end up somewhere that is as bad as the place that you just walked away from? See, this is a problem that almost every life form faces. No matter whether you're a human, an animal or a bacterium, you are probably collaborating with somebody, somehow. And this collaboration is costly, right? Before benefits can be reaped, somebody needs to make an investment. And this opens the door to exploitation. You might find yourself interacting with others who never put any of their effort into the collaboration. But they sure want their part of the benefits, right? Let's think about this in a simplified setting. Suppose there's two types of agents. On the one hand, we have cooperators. And the cooperators, they make real contribution into their collaborations. On the other hand, we have defectors who contribute nothing, but they still like to reap the benefits. So if a cooperator meets another cooperator, both contribute and then they share the benefit. If a cooperator meets a defector, the benefits still get shared, but this time the cooperator does all the work. And if two defectors meet, well, guess what? They both refuse to make any investment, so no benefit is ever produced. There's nothing to share. Still, somehow, the defectors seem to get the better deal, right? So, at least they get something from collaborations without ever investing anything. So, if that is the case, why, why bother with collaborating? Why ever invest something? So, perhaps the real question is, why do we see so much cooperation in nature? The interplay between cooperators and defectors has been studied extensively in evolutionary game theory. What has received less attention is the ability to move between places in these games. And maybe this is even for good reason, because moving is very much reminiscent of another mechanism which has been studied, punishment. If cooperators have the ability to punish defectors for not making their investments, that makes defection less attractive. And in the long run, that means it benefits cooperation. So, it's not too hard to imagine walking away as a form of punishment, right? Just imagine you're a cooperator and you are in a bad place. So you walk away. Well, the people that you leave behind now find themselves in an even less cooperative environment. Serves them right, you might say, right? So, this actually makes sense. Walking away is a form of punishment. Punishment increases levels of cooperation. So, no surprise that walking away would increase levels of cooperation. Problem solved. Except it doesn't work this way. Imagine for a moment that all places are kind of similar. In this case, you don't stand much to gain by moving. If you leave, you won't find happiness. You will just find another place that is just as bad as the place that you left. There is also another deeper, more interesting implication. If all places are the same, leaving doesn't work as punishment anymore. You could still think that you punish the defectors you will move away from. But actually, you are also providing a benefit to a very similar set of defectors that already is waiting for you at your destination. Or phrased differently, you could say that, statistically speaking, when one cooperator leaves from a patch, in average, another arrives at the same time from somewhere else. It actually even gets worse. Because if there's a large number of agents moving around, looking for a better place that exists nowhere, that actually introduces mixing to the system. And this mixing actually means that places become more similar. So all the agents looking for a better place, well, they're actually creating these conditions where a better place doesn't exist anymore. So is this really inevitable? 
In a recent paper, we studied the dynamics of the system in a mathematical model. The model has two variables, which record the number of cooperators and defectors. We give these variables an index i to denote the place to which we refer. Effectively, this means we now have a copy of these two variables for every place in the system. To describe the dynamics, we write two differential equations. This dot here shows that we are now talking about changes in time. In an ecological setting, cooperators and defectors can increase due to reproduction, which depends on the success of their respective strategies. Conversely, the numbers can decrease due to mortality, which may depend on the numbers of the respective strategy, as well as the whole population density in the respective place. Finally, there are terms that couple this place to some neighboring places in a large network. These terms describe the departure and arrival of agents. They contain a function c that describes how the agents make their decisions to leave or stay. We envision a situation where agents occasionally have the chance to leave. And if this happens, they evaluate the current situation and make the decision accordingly. Now, in this model, there's always a stationary state in which all places are the same. This is a homogeneous state, where everything is equally bad. So the state always exists, but it's not always stable. If certain thresholds are crossed, stability of the state is lost. And then some places become better, some places become worse. However, the better places now provide safe havens for cooperation. That's essentially places where cooperators can flee to, to escape to a better environment. To gain a deeper understanding, we study this model by a combination of two mathematical tools. First, we have generalized modeling. Generalized modeling actually allows us to study the dynamics of a system without restricting the biology to specific functional forms. You could say we are not just studying one model, we are studying a whole class of models. The second tool is mass stability functions. And mass stability functions allow us to separate the dynamics from the effect of the underlying network. So you could say we are not just studying the dynamics on one network. We are studying the dynamics on every possible network. So I don't want to go deeper into the mathematics here, but let me explain a little bit at least. The stability of this homogeneous state where everything is equally bad, the stability depends on a matrix that is called the Jacobian. Using our two mathematical tools, we can write the Jacobian as a function of four other matrices. The first of these does not contain any information. It's an identity matrix, which is something like the number one, only for matrices. By contrast, the second matrix is another Jacobian. It is a Jacobian of the dynamics in a single place. So this one contains all the local biology, the effects of birth and death, and all the interactions between agents. The third matrix is a so-called Laplacian, which captures the network structure, so it specifies which places are connected to each other. Finally, we have the coupling matrix, which describes how agents make their decisions. By splitting the Jacobian into individual contributions, the mathematics helps us make sense of the conditions that need to be met for safe havens to form. For example, our results show that safe havens for cooperation are favored if the local biology is sufficiently nonlinear. If we don't have such nonlinear biology, then basically we only get safe havens in extreme situations. We can also ask about the effect of network structure. Safe havens are favored if hubs are present in the network, that are places that connect to many other places. If such hubs exist, safe havens will typically not form directly at the hubs, but in the neighborhood. Perhaps most interesting is the effect of the way in which the agents decide when to walk away. Here again, safe havens require a certain amount of nonlinearity, and the way to get this nonlinearity is to make the decision to leave very selectively and decisively. So what does this mean for us? I think there's a message about forgiveness here. If you find that others 
don't make the investment that they promised. Well, it's good to be lenient and let them get away with it. However, if you find yourself in an environment where you are constantly exploited, it's important that you walk away decisively. And by doing so, you actually do the best for the system because you're implementing a strategy that allows safe havens of cooperation to emerge. And that also in turn means that if you do need to walk away and find a better place, this place is likely to exist for you somewhere. Thank you very much. So, hey, since you watched till the end, why don't you actually check out the paper? It has all the details that I glossed over, and the math on this one is actually fun. Of course, also you might want to do the YouTube thing and leave a comment, or like and subscribe for more.